So, we're nearly there in terms of the fundamental equations of electricity and magnetism. We've got three of them, Gauss's law for electricity, Gauss's law for magnetism, and Faraday's law complete, and there's just a little bit to go on Ampere's law. It turns out that Ampere's law is still a little bit incomplete, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, why do we know it's incomplete? This was not discovered experimentally. This was discovered, unlike the other laws, by looking at the equations and by a thought experiment. It has since been confirmed experimentally, but that's not how Maxwell worked out in the first place. So let's look at the first argument from symmetry. You'll notice there are real patterns in this set of equations. The top two are surface integrals, the bottom two are line integrals. Now the top two are telling you that the surface integral of electric field equals the sum of the charge inside, and the surface integral of the magnetic field equals, well it's less than zero, but it's actually equivalent to the number of monopoles inside. It's just the monopoles don't exist in our universe. So in fact these two are very symmetrical. Monopoles could exist in our universe. If they did, these two would look exactly the same. Just electric, electric field and electric charge here, magnetic field and magnetic charge over there. When we go down to these, there's also a symmetry. This is telling us the magnetic field is equal to the sum of the current through it, and current is the rate of flow of charge. And it could well be that we should add here a sum of the monopole current. I don't know what we call that. I've got a big M. The flow of monopoles through it. And indeed, if monopoles do exist, you should have that over there. So that's looking symmetrical so far, but there is just one thing left that isn't symmetrical. The line integral of the electric field is proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux through it. But is the line integral of the magnetic field got something to do with the rate of change of the electric flux? Well, Maxwell thought, hmm, maybe there should be something like that in here, some sort of rate of change of electric flux. Uh, so the, the electric field is changing. So he was already primed to think that there might be uh, some sort of, I don't know, uh, d by dx of integral of the electric field, dot normal vector over the area, with probably some constant in front, because that would make these equations look symmetrical. Another way to see this argument is to look, think of a circuit with a capacitor. Let's imagine we have a current going in and coming out here, so the charge is building up on this. Now, as we've got a current flowing down the wire over here, uh, from the right-hand rule we know it's going to have a magnetic field, like so. And ditto on this side. But how about here? Over the hole. There is no current through there, so it doesn't seem like there should be any magnetic field. So we're going to get a nice magnetic field here, 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 all the way along the wire, and then a sudden gap, and then more electric field. That seems a bit odd. It kind of makes more sense if there's the similar magnetic field going around the thing the whole way along. And if you think about this in terms of Ampere's law, the contrast becomes more stark. If we do a loop around here, the line integral around the side of this loop of the magnetic field should be the amount of current going through. But there is no current between the two plates, so the total magnetic field around there must be zero. Which sounds a bit odd because, remember, this law also applies if you bulge the surface. So let's say we bulge the surface, it looks like this. So we've still got the same line as before. So the same line integral around it but now we've bulged our surface. Now there is a current going through the surface, and so now, all of a sudden, there should be a magnetic field around here. So we've got the same loop, just two different surfaces, two bubble films across it, and this one says, no, nope, no magnetic field. This one says, yes, magnetic field. So that doesn't seem right. And it also ties in with the equations we've got back here, because if we had something like this, something to do with the rate of change of electric field, that might solve the problem. Because, 
Remember, when there's a current coming in here, you could have an electric field in between the two, which is steadily increasing. So maybe if we had such a term, in this case, there would be no current crossing the surface, but there would be a changing electric field across it, so that might make things a little bit better.